Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, so, let me begin today's lecture with uh, uh, discussion on aluminum hydrides. In my previous lecture, I was discussing about boron hydrides and their preparation and their utility in organic synthesis. So, let me now start discussion on aluminum hydrides. Uh, aluminum hydride can be prepared by reacting aluminum trichloride with uh, lithium aluminum hydride in ether. So, how that happens? So, AlCl3 plus lithium aluminum hydride, it gives So, this is how one can make conveniently aluminum hydride okay, or one can also call it as aluminin. Okay. So, however, the formation of etherate complexes because of electron deficiency complicates the synthesis. Okay. So, uh, these compounds are highly unstable. Okay. So, above 423 Kelvin. Okay. So, these are unstable with respect to decomposition to give the corresponding element that is aluminum and hydrogen. And since these are thermally unstable, so one can think of exploiting their property in generating thin films of aluminum. Uh, this is where uh, utility of these things comes. In fact, volatile P block elements have been used in, in generating thin films. Aluminum hydride reacts with Lewis bases very similar to boron hydride to form the corresponding adducts. For example, let us take uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride and treat this one with AlCl3 and So, here uh, this is another way of making it and then stabilizing the mass adducts. For example, take uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride and treat that one with aluminum chloride in presence of uh, soft base such as uh, trithalamine. It gives an adduct of AlH3 uh, and LiCl will be precipitating out. So of course, this reaction can be carried out uh, in a organic solvent such as ether. Now, let us look into some reactions of lithium aluminum hydride with organic compounds. Okay. So, lithium aluminum hydride. Okay. So, take this one, okay. treat this one with okay. halogen alkane or alkyl halide, it gives RH. Okay. And one can also treat this one with an aldehyde. Okay. So, this gives RCH2OH. Okay. One can also treat this one with a ketone. So, it gives secondary, this is primary alcohol
So, in this case what we get is a secondary alcohol R2 or R or CH2 CHOH secondary alcohol we get it and instead if you take an acid it gives again a primary alcohol okay and if you say take an acid chloride acid chloride it gives again primary alcohol okay if we take an amide one can get a primary amine treat this one with an azide organic azide or n3 it gives amine if you treat with a nitril such as acetone nitril or benzo nitril it gives primary amine If it is treated with hydrogen peroxide, hydro peroxide, okay, it gives alcohol. If you treat with a peroxide, this is hydro peroxide and this is peroxide it will give again alcohol ok. So, these are few uh, reactions and you can see uh, how effectively one can use uh, for a variety of organic transformations ok. Uh, and of course, uh, one can also uh, do reactions such as this one for example, uh, SiCl4 when it is treated with lithium aluminum hydride, it gives the silane SiH4 okay, and similarly PCL3 lithium aluminum hydride gives PH3 okay. and one can also tetramethyl zinc. minus if it is treated with lithium aluminum hydride it can give very uh, unstable species of course this is very unstable nevertheless one can make tetrahydrozincate can be made and it can also reduce metals for example AgCl when it is treated with lithium aluminum hydride Okay, it gives silver. Okay, so, these are some of the reactions where you can find uh, the utility of lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, so, let us look into digallane. Okay, the simplest uh, gallium hydride is digallane. Digallane is nothing but Ga2H6 okay, and this is prepared starting from gallium trichloride. Okay, and the product condenses at low temperature as a white solid, but decomposes about 253 Kelvin. So, one can conveniently prepare starting from gallium trichloride, treating this one with trimethylsilane as a okay, as a source of uh, hydride ions. Of course, uh, and the structure of this one is similar to ethane. Initially what we get is
this one something like this and this one on further treatment with lithium gallium hydride okay at 240 kelvin it gives So, this is how one can make uh, digalene. One can expect uh, reactions of digalene very similar to diborane. Only thing one should remember is uh, all reactions of digalene must be carried out at low temperature since it decomposes about 253 Kelvin uh, to give gallium and dihydrogen. Okay. Whatever the reactions I had described in the case of diborane can be carried out using digalene provided we maintain the temperature below 253 Kelvin. Now, let us look into uh, uh, oxides, uh, oxo acids, oxo anions and hydroxides of uh, group 13 elements. Within the P block basic character increases down a group, this is true uh, with most of the groups as well. Thus, boron oxides are exclusively acidic, but when you go for heavier ones of course, aluminum is amphoteric and gallium also to an extent amphoteric, whereas indium and thallium oxides are exclusively basic and thallium oxide, thallium 1 oxide is soluble in water and the resulting hydroxide is a strong base and its basicity can be compared to potassium hydroxide. So, boron forms B2O3 and also several polyborates and also borosilicate glasses, borosilicate glasses are uh, uh, very important in um, glass industry. Boron oxide B2O3 is acidic and is prepared by dehydration of boric acid. Okay. So, alkali metal and alkaline earth metal oxides are basic whereas P block oxides are acidic okay. and uh, boron oxide is no exception uh, and one can prepare uh, boron oxide by simply performing dehydration of boric acid. For example, 2 B O H thrice solid on heating it gives B 2 O 3 plus 3 H 2 O. Okay. The principal oxide of boron is B 2 O 3 and it is obtained by dehydration of boric acid at red heat. So, that is what I showed you. So, water is taken up slowly by B2O2 giving back BOH thrice that is called orthoboric or boric acid. BOH thrice is also called orthoboric acid or simply it can be called as boric acid. But above 1270 Kelvin molten B2O2 reacts rapidly with steam to give uh, reacts rapidly with steam. to give so this is called metaboric acid and of course uh, when we look into the property uh, boric acid is a very weak brown red acid in aqueous solution in fact boric acid primarily a weak lewis acid and the complex it forms with H2O essentially is uh, uh, looks this way. Okay. So, <clears throat> and this is the actual source of proton comes here. So, we can, we can see this one from this reaction. proton so pka for this one is 
Okay. Uh, as is typical of many of the lighter elements of P block, there is a tendency for the anion to polymerize by condensation with the loss of water. Thus, in concentrated neutral or basic solution, equilibrium uh, the one I am going to show will exist. For example, Okay, some oxides uh, of boron uh, are shown in this slide, you can see here. Uh, so, B3, O3, OH uh, thrice will be something like this and also uh, B3, O3, OH four times will be having some something like the cyclic structure okay. and of course, through hydrogen bonding interaction it can have a two dimensional sheet like structure. Okay. Sodium perborate. So, another uh, uh, interesting molecule. Uh, so, this is uh, NaBO3 4H2O. This is NaBO3 4H2O. So, this is used as a bleach in laundry powders automatic dishwash powders and also whitening toothpaste. So, although the formula is often given as NaBO3 4H2O, the compound contains the peroxide anion O2 2 minus. So, and is more accurately described in this way. So, it is appropriate to describe in this way instead of showing uh, as it is solvated with 4 equivalents of water. So, one should conveniently uh, precisely write in this way. Na2, B2, O2, this we have two peroxides, OH. So, this is where it, its utility comes as a bleach plus 6 H. Okay. The correct description of sodium perborate is this one. The compound is preferred to hydrogen peroxide in many applications because it is more stable and liberates oxygen only at elevated temperature. So, oxidental uh, spillage does not leads to any complications that we come across with respect to uh, hydrogen peroxide especially when it is stored in larger quantities. From that point of view, uh, this sodium perborate is preferred over hydrogen peroxide. So, in this slide I have shown some of the uh, boron oxide and hydroxide uh, peroxides and all those things you can see here. Okay. Now, let us look into uh, the oxides of aluminum. Uh, aluminum oxides occur in mainly two forms, one is alpha alumina that is also called corundum and also gamma alumina that is called activated alumina. The alpha form is made by dehydrating aluminum hydroxide or aluminum oxyhydroxide at 1300 K, while dehydration of gamma uh, aluminum oxyhydroxide below 720 Kelvin gives uh, gamma or activated alumina. Uh, the amphoteric nature of alumina and uh, trihydroxy aluminum can be illustrated in the formation of aluminate when AlOH thrice or aluminum hydroxide is dissolved in an excess of alkali. So, I can sh I will show you I will write down all the equations for you. Okay. So, these reactions I am going to write essentially depict the amphoteric nature of uh, oxides of aluminum.
same reaction, but with H plus that is acidic condition. It gives hexa aqua aluminum compound. Okay. Similarly, aluminum hydroxide, if we treated with base, it gives soluble aluminum hydroxide or aluminate. Similarly, if it is treated with Some of these reactions simply show the amphoteric nature of aluminum oxide and as well as aluminum hydroxide. Now, let us look into the oxides of gallium, indium and thallium. So, uh, gallium if you see gallium like aluminum forms more than one polymorphs of uh, uh, oxides for example, Ga2O3 is known and Ga gallium oxyhydroxide is known and also gallium hydroxide very similar to aluminum and the compounds are again amphoteric very similar to aluminum analogous aluminum compounds. Indium oxide, indium oxyhydroxide and indium hydroxide are essentially basic in nature and thallium 3 compounds of course, you should remember thallium forms both thallium 1 compound and as well as thallium uh, 3 compounds. Okay. So, thallium three forms the oxide Tl 2 O 3, okay. but no simple hydroxide is known for that one. And this thallium oxide is insoluble in water and decomposes in under acidic condition or in acidic medium it decomposes. Thallium oxide on treatment with water it gives thallium hydroxide, thallium 1 hydroxide. So, in concentrated sodium hydroxide solution and in the presence of barium hydroxide, the hydrated oxide forms. Okay. So, hydrated oxide of thallium O2, thallium oxide forms a, a complex of this type. So, that means essentially Tl2O3. Okay. So, plus barium hydroxide in sodium hydroxide gives a complex ion of this type Ba2 TiOH 6 times OH. Okay. So, in the solid state uh, uh, this uh, anion trianion okay, is connected to barium 2 atoms and OH minus ions to give a structure that is related to that of K2PTCl6 potassium hexachloroplatinate. So, I have shown here. Uh, okay. uh, so, just I will show you in uh, the next one how they are connected. For example, here you can see this is the hexahydroxy uh, thalate. Uh, thaliate. So, here you can see uh, all OH groups are octahedrally disposed here. Uh, this is taken from this paper here I have cited here. And of course, here you can see the coordination sphere of thallium and how uh, these uh, 6 uh, hydroxy groups are surrounding and, and again each uh, hydroxy group lone pair this okay, is interacting with barium. I have shown barium here. Okay, one of them I have labeled and this is oxygen. This is the uh, monomeric unit okay, and then this is how in the lattice it looks like and this structure is very similar to uh, potassium hexachloroplatinate here. Okay. So, uh, lastly before I conclude my talk let me uh, show you about borides. So, when boron is heated with most metals. Okay, metal borides are formed similar to the carbides or 
silly sides or hydrates we come across respectively they reaction with uh, carbon, uh, silicon or hydrogen. The structure of these borehydrates are dependent on the metal to boron ratio and contain single pairs, chains, double chains, sheets or cluster of boron atoms. So, compounds with composition M 2 B uh, we come across okay. composition with M 2 B okay. for example, F E 2 B have single boron atoms we, with those of F E B we have okay, uh, here single boron atom and here in this case the ratio is 1, 1 is to 1 mm, and and here in this case basically what happens we have a single chain of boron atoms running through the metal lattice. Okay. So, in MB2 we also have another uh, type of boride that is called MB2. So, in this one uh, what happens material has a sheet structure that means one borane layer is there and above and below metals are there it continues alternate arrangement of boron as well as metal uh, sheets. Okay. So, example Mg B2 okay, or titanium B2. Okay. So, we also have another one uh, boride having composition 1 is to 6. So, for example, magnesium is there. So, there are clusters of 6 boron atoms arranged in an octahedral fashion okay, within the cube of a metal atom in a typical CSCL type structure that is the FCC structure. In MB12, okay, another the last one. Uh, we have M B 12 in this one okay, for example, aluminum. So, in this one basically what happens uh, we have an icosahedral B 12 clusters surrounded by aluminum uh, in the lattice. Okay. So, I will try to show you some of them here you can see here a single chain running uh, okay, here okay, where the ratio is 1 is to 1 and, and here a uh, ratio is 1 is to 2 here. So, between two sheets of metal one boron sheet is there okay. and here again example is zirconium boride you can clearly see between the two layers of metal this boron sheet is there okay. and, and here uh, where uh, the ratio is 1 is to 6 you can see a typically in a cubane at the center okay, uh, uh, boron cluster is there in which 6 boron atoms are essentially disposed towards 6 corners of an octahedron. So, their arrangement is octahedron and also one can also see similar one where icosahedron will be there in case of a, a MB12 boron hydrate. So, let me stop here in my next lecture I will be discussing about the halides of group 13 elements. So, uh, thank you very much and have a pleasant reading of inorganic chemistry until I return with my next lecture. Thank you very much. Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.